Well, hey everybody, welcome to this amazing interview that you're gonna glean so much information from. This is Kevin Snyder, I'm with Vidya Rahman. Vidya, how you doing today? Well, Kevin, doing well. Now, what we're gonna do in the next just few brief minutes, we're gonna talk to Vidya about her recent experience winning the District Toastmasters International Speech Contest. And for those of you, if you're a Toastmaster, you probably know a little bit about the International Speech Contest. There is a world championship of public speaking, believe it or not. And Vidya has just risen to the top. She is gonna be competing at the next level. And hopefully we'll be seeing Vidya on the world stage here come, come August during the Toastmasters convention. And folks, if you don't know about Toastmasters, we would encourage you to consider it. It's a great opportunity to practice your speaking. And without further ado, um, Vidya, is it right if we just, we're, we're gonna ask you some questions about your experience and just maybe even some tips that you give people too about practicing a speech effectively. Does that, does that sound pretty good? That sounds good, Kevin. That sounds good. Yes, that works. Okay. All right, so um, how would you describe the speech contest to somebody? I, I kind of gave a little bit of background, but is there anything else that you would add? Like, uh, I mean, we could talk about the speech contest, the structure of it, and it would take 15, 20 minutes, but there's a there's different levels to it, right? Kind of walk yes, us through what yes. the speech contest is. Right, the speech contest starts at a club level. It's in clubs across the country, really. Uh, and internationally. So it starts at the club level, it moves on to an area level. And if you succeed in the area level, you move to a division level and your competition gets tougher. And then you ultimately get your district level. And after that, of course, we'll see what happens then the regionals and the world championship. So it sounds to me like it's kind of like the NCAA tournament of speaking, right? Or um, basketball, yes. it's a basketball, or like the Super Bowl, you've got the playoffs. And as long as you keep advancing, you keep competing, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. So what in the world inspired you to compete? Like, what was it about this contest that you said, hey, I, I, I feel like I want to do this? Right. I have competed in the past, but then there's been a long gap. And this go around, sometime last year, in the middle of our COVID lockdown, I started seriously thinking about our future in my future uh, as a professional speaker. So I started to leave my home club in Charlotte and start attending speechathons and other club meetings because I just wanted to get a broader exposure. I think I was getting too comfortable in my own setting among friends. And after that, I realized, you know, I, I am good at this. And that's when I heard about uh, the Speaking Professionally Toastmasters Club. And I said, this was God sent. It came at the right time. Inspired by that, I've been thinking a lot. I even drew a vision board about what I wanted to be in 2021. And then I knew this contest was coming. And I said, why should I be afraid? If I want the whole world to judge me as a professional speaker, I mean, I can handle a contest judging. And I said, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be open and transparent. Take all the feedback I can get during this process. Um, and that's probably why I said, I will do the speech if that's truly my goal. So it's my vision, my vision of my future self that drove me towards this contest. Begin with the end in mind. I like it. And <laughs> so I'm glad that you mentioned speaking professional Toastmasters. That's how you and I know each other. Um, it's a, it's a great club for for people that are want that want to pursue professional speaking. So the fact that you found that connection and this contest came into play that's 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 wonderful. Um, so I'm looking at just some questions I had in advance. I mean, how did you come up with the idea? Tell us what your title of your speech was and how did you kind of come up with that? The title of the speech is Prison Break. And it's a long story. It, it wasn't, Prison Break wasn't my first choice. And the topic is a topic near and dear my heart because um, in most of the speeches I've given at the club level at during regular club meetings, it's about personal transformation. It's about uh, finding purpose, finding happiness. When you feel ignored, when you feel, um, you know, not appreciated by your leadership in a corporate, uh, in corporate America, let's say. So these speeches have been common. It's something I'm truly care about. So when it was contest time, I kind of pulled segments from all my club speeches and I re-scripted and rearranged the speech 
the first title of my speech was actually uh, called Losing, Losing the Cloak of Invisibility. That was my thing. And I was trying to put in a whole bunch of Harry Potter references. After some time, I said, that's so not working. And it was about breaking away from limitations. So I said, yeah. why not Prison Break? Much easier title. So that's when I, when I couldn't hold on to that old title. I said, Prison Break is going to work. It's short and sweet. Uh, it just tells you right enough about what you're going to speak about, but not doesn't give away the secret of the speech. Right. So how many, how many different, I wouldn't say versions or scripts, because the scripts, you know, I, I heard I heard a great world champion speaker say, uh, I think this is Darren LaCroix that said the best speeches are never written, they're rewritten. So how many versions of your speech, like when you actually made edits, substantive edits, uh, did you kind of keep track how many times you were polishing your speech up? Actually, I lost count. If you were to look at my first, <laughs> if you had seen my first draft versus what I finally delivered, I mean, there's a huge difference. And I know after the area contest, I think I was touching that speech on a daily basis. Sometimes what? it was just to highlight some text to emphasize, emphasize the words. Sometimes it was changing a word because it felt it worked better with me. So there was, on a daily basis, I would spend some time in the morning to look at my speech and reassess it, rearrange it. And, you know, sometimes I was inspired by something I saw on a speaking website or something to say, oh, you know what? I should think about it in, th in that approach. You gave me a lot of suggestions at the club too. So um, that helped. But there was a constant rewrite, constant. I mean, it never stopped. It finally stopped maybe two days prior to the final district contest, you know, because I had to memorize it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's another question too. I mean, that's something in the past, you know, when, when I've competed, a challenge that I've had with a seven minute speech, I don't know if we said that earlier to folks watching this, but you know, you're limited five to seven minute Technically, they give you to seven minutes, 30 seconds, but if you go seven minutes, 31 seconds, you get disqualified. So most people have a speech right around six and a half minutes to seven minutes. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of like having that routine, that, that practice structure for you. I mean, what, um, when you were doing these rewrites, did you find yourself like thinking, hey, I could be using this for a, for a professional speech too. Like, did, did you find a way to kind of wed the two between oh, the speech? Yes, yes. You know, the, because when you are condensing all your thoughts, because, you know, you've been reading so much, you've been preparing so much all your life, really, on yeah. your, this passion. And this topic was close to my heart. I remember there were segments I really wanted to expand on. How did I transform myself at my job, um, I couldn't get into that level of detail. I just had to say I transformed uh, because it, you know, but the thing is there is so much con content out there for a much larger speech. There is so much I want to share, but I just couldn't fit it all in in two minutes. So yes, it, it's, it's a speech that can grow in multiple areas and, you know, and applicable to many audiences, you know. So what, <laughs> Like uh, you and I, we kind of worked together a little bit. I, I, it was great to watch you compete. Our club also hosted some practice sessions for you. Um, what did you learn about yourself through this process? Um, any kind of awareness that just going through this and spending so much time on content, but also being vulnerable and authentic to it. I'm sure that you kind of transformed through this process, yes, right? I did. I mean, there is, to be honest, Exponential growth comes during contest season. And I know this only because I had done it once before in a tall tales contest, not this one, because the feedback you get sharpens your skills. I mean, I tell you from where I was at my first club speech to the final district, the feedback worked. I realized, I always knew I was coachable, but I realized I'm even more a sponge than I ever thought, you know? So I, re I took a lot of feedback from you, Kevin, mostly from you uh, and all our club members gave us wonderful tips because we see ourselves in a different light. You need feedback from others. So coachability, huge aspect if you have to grow. Um, secondly, it's managing your time. You know, we all have full-time jobs and contests can be all consuming in terms of, so I'm an early riser. So I realized that one thing I did well is I got most of my work related to the contest done before 8 a.m. 
So I was done. I, if, if it's four to eight, it's four to eight. So, but I, and I was fresh, I was inspired. I learned that I'm good at time management. That was one good takeaway. And then the other things, I realized that, um, you know, there are, I realized I have some skills. I mean, there are, I mean, lots of skills, but I hate to brag about myself, but I, I'm really, I felt I was mentally strong. Um, you get strength because you know people are judging you and you know you could potentially lose, you know? And it takes a lot of mental fortitude. And I think it's really strengthening me if, if my goal is to be a professional speaker. Um, I got to be prepared for audiences not liking what I'm going to do at some point. Um, but to have that strength to yeah. process it. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I learned a lot. And I tell you, for me, the biggest thing is the growth. You know, the feedback, especially from a virtual conference perspective, the feedback I got for a virtual contest was amazing. I wouldn't have figured that out on my own. <laughs> well, I'm so proud that you pushed yourself. It was wonderful just watching you transform. I mean, you you were living your speech the past couple months. I mean, I think our yes. club contest was what, back in February? Right. Here we are, right. it's May 4th. Um, so as you advance to these levels, you truly were for exuding this, this the speech itself. Um, but you can, you know, people can practice, 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 get feedback, get feedback, get feedback, then it's game time. So let's go back to last Saturday when you were competing. Um, do you mind sharing what was going through your mind like five minutes before you knew you were going to be introduced? <laughs> oh man, I tell you, you know, um, I was nervous for the other contests, but this district contest, my, my anxiety levels hit peak uh, about 10 minutes before they were going to introduce me. I was speaker number six. Uh, I really felt my mouth going dry. My heart was racing. I felt like no words were going to come on and I had to control all those reactions, right? And once I settled my nerves and calmed myself down, as soon as they announced my name, I thought it was action time and I had no excuse. I worked so hard for that particular moment. And almost immediately, as soon as I started speaking, there was no more anxiety, you know? Yeah. I was in my element, but the minutes leading up to it were hyper anxious. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I know every time I've competed in the past, you know, I can literally see my heart pounding on my chest. I'm like, does the audience see that too? You know, and, yes. and, and, and I still, I, you know, and this isn't about me, this is about you, but I, I, I like, I love the fact that you just share that because people think, hey, you know, a great speaker doesn't look nervous because they've learned how to control. They still feel those emotions. They still feel nervousness, but they learn how to control it. You know, that's one of the great things about when you practice, 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 you're developing a skill set that, um, you know, you don't, you know, you don't do the arm thing. And you, so you, you mastered that wonderful job. Right. I, I tell you, it is funny that the morning of the contest, when I woke up, I said, I've always, this, when you talk about what did I, how did I grow? I, I, the one thing I told myself is I can't control other things, but I can control my, my speech, my delivery. So I focused on myself. So the morning off, I was calm, but you're right, right before the speech, um, <laughs> uh, all that wisdom about being in control just went off by the wayside, but it's all about managing yeah. the anxiety. Yep. Well, you can say, I'm not going to answer that, Kevin, but did you watch the other presenters? Because you were six, so you competed with, I know that you were the last contestant, so there were six speakers total. Did you watch anybody else? I did. Uh, I was listening to them more than watching them, but I was pacing and a virtual setting allows you to do that. <laughs> so we, I was not on video. I was listening to the first three. I was technically pacing, but listening to the content. Um, yeah. I, I was too nervous to sit down. You know, yeah. I was just too nervous to sit down. And by the time fourth and fifth came, I had to separate myself to right. make sure I remembered my lines. And then I came back when my name was being introduced. <laughs> So when you listen to the first, you, you were in a great contest, by the way. I know, you know, often people say that, and this was a great contest. Um, you and I have talked about this since. We we know that other people, like, there was like, wow, you know, usually one speaker kind of rises to the top. And then in this case, there were, I mean, there were some great speeches. Um, they were, they were. No surprise that you won, 
but you also had some strong competition. So did, did listening to the first three, did that impact you in any, in any way? And feel free to say, I'm not telling you because that's my secret ingredient, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd be, I'm, I'm fine. I was intimidated. I knew they were good, but at that, by that point, I had already come to terms with, I have done my best and I know I'll do my best. The results, the results don't matter at that point. You know, when you get to that stage, yes, I felt that they were strong, strong speakers, but I told myself this, it didn't make me any more nervous than I already was, uh, but I paid attention to how good they were. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so last, last question, kind of tell us what, what's next for you then? Like, what's the next process? You get a little bit of a breather. Um, <laughs> a, little bit of a, a little bit of a breather because of the virtual setting, the video from district gets to the regionals and yeah. they pick the top two in every region. I don't know how many regions there are across the US, but there are many regions. Um, so once that happens, if you pass two regions, the two, the two speakers from our region seven, uh, that goes into the, the world championship. So it's world championship yeah. is in August starts with the semifinals followed by the finals. But I never think too far ahead. That's my personality. I like to focus on one game at a time, one task at a time. And that has helped me. I don't have a very long view of what's coming, but I will be prepared. <laughs> you know, um, I'll always work on it. I'll always be prepared, but I don't obsess about what's yet to come. Yeah. No, that that's impressive. I, you know, whenever I watch uh, coaches or athletes get asked that question, you know, and they all always have focus on that next game because nothing else really matters if if they don't if advance. Yeah, if they don't get past that. So, yeah, you're you're smart. So, folks, hey, folks watching this, we we could be talking to the future. In fact, I think we are talking to the future <laughs> world champion. And we are so honored. Uh, I'm so honored, Vidya, to to know you, to have kind of just supported you through this process. Um, and the fact that you're part of our speaking profession Toastmasters group, I mean, we're, we're honored and humbled to have you. So thank you. Oh, you know what, Kevin, I tell you, I feel, I mean, you have helped me so much. Your words of wisdom in our Toastmasters clubs meeting, your recordings. I mean, all the suggestions you gave me during this process helped me so much. There are things I could never have seen that you helped me with. So I owe you big time, Kevin. It was your suggestions and guidance that made a world of difference. And I'm being so honest and sincere about this. You and our fellow Toastmasters in the club have helped me suggest, but you were primarily responsible for some of those critical tweaks that I had to make. <laughs> So thank well, you. I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you for that. I learned a lot. In fact, my wife, you know, she saw us talking a few times. I actually shared some of your, some of my ideas to you. I shared them with her first because she's been kind of in the past when I've had coaching, she's also been kind of that indirect coach for me. Uh, the one I don't pay for. Um, and she's wonderful with feedback and really just being a sounding board. But she said, wow, you're, you know, you, you, you're really like together. You all are putting a lot of time in this. And I was like, well, I, she's got an amazing speech. Um, and I think that's, that's what people don't see. They don't see, you know, all, all the work that goes in behind the scenes with the speaker, whether it's a seven minute speech with Toastmasters or whether it's a keynote or a trick, like whoever the type of presenter somebody is professionally, the audience doesn't know, or they don't see all that back end that went into it. They only see what's right there in front of them. And that's, that can be intimidating when they learn more about it, you know, and you've done that. You're, you're a testimony to that. So. Thank you for that, Kevin. Good stuff. All right, folks. Um, now, video, I, I probably, and uh, you know, the video, we, we want the regional folks to see that for the first time. So I don't know, I wouldn't want a regional judge to see your video. So your video, we're not going to post it. Um, uh, only you have that. So I guess we'll wait and see. Um, we'll have to do a, a maybe a, a session two here um, after the regional quarterfinals. And uh, so folks, stay tuned. So. Vidya, thank you for your time. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank you.